Well, hello everyone. I am Burlington Mayor Marianne Mead Ward and welcome to another edition of Burlington Matters. And in fact, this is our last show before the blackout period leading up to the municipal election. Yes, there is another election coming up, uh, the third one in a year, and this time you get to pick your uh, mayor, ward councillor, regional chair, and trustee. So uh, make sure to watch for that in your inbox and uh, your mailbox, and people may come to your door and uh, and cast, cast your ballot October 24. So uh, between this is our last show between now and then, and hope to pick up uh, after October. But I'm thrilled once again to have an amazing panel of residents here in Burlington to talk to us about issues that I think you will find very interesting. So uh, we have with us Lady Adegisela Atiba, who is the founder of the African Caribbean Council of Halton, and she's going to tell us what that, what that is all about. Uh, I will call her probably Lady Abba through <laughs> the rest of the show. Uh, and uh, Lisa and Dennis Scott, uh, who uh, Dennis is the chair of the Halton Black History Awareness Society. Uh, Lisa is the Director of Corporate and Public Relations and Sponsorship for the Halton Black History Awareness Society. And this is a great month to have uh, my esteemed guests and colleagues on this show because we have many things happening this month, which we're going to talk about. Uh, Emancipation Day uh, and Month, Black, African and Caribbean Appreciation Month. That is all in the month of August. So we're going to talk about what each of those means and some of the things that have happened and uh, and ways that people can still get involved and learn more about the amazing contributions that people of uh, Black, African and Caribbean have, uh, descent have made to our communities here in Halton. So without further ado, um, I am going to turn this, uh, give you both a chance to, uh, to answer this, uh, Ashley, but uh, Lady Abba, what is, um, what, does, what is Emancipation Day and, and when is it and what does it mean to you? Go ahead. Thank you so much. And I wanna start by saying thank you so much for doing this. Um, you know, one of the things that uh, our allies can do is to support us by uh, showing, you know, their support within the community and um, encouraging us to do the best we can uh, because we are all uh, actively adding value to to the to the region. So thank you so much. I want to say that you have my vote anytime. Uh, you've been an amazing, amazing ally since, since we've had that uh, first uh, conversation with you. Now, what does emancipation uh, mean to me or even our community as a whole? Um, again, the, the Canadian government, when they actually um, brought it into law last year, uh, it was to encourage and recognize the impact that the black community has had in the history of Canada. So, and it's important to continue to talk about this because people tend to forget uh, um, Africans are not new to the history of Canada. We're part and parcel of what Canada stands for. And we continue to add value. We continue to uh, impact lives. And it's so important, especially when we're talking about inclusivity to ensure that everybody is heard, everybody has a voice. So the fact that Canadian government actually passed that into law was a, a phenomenal uh, gesture, and we feel that uh, it makes us, it, it shows that we're part and parcel of what Canada is, and that's just, you know, mind-blowing to me. So thank you again for, for, for helping us to uh, amplify our voices through this kind of uh, um, initiative. Well, thank you for that great, uh, great intro. And, and maybe I'll turn to you, Dennis, first, and then you, uh, Lisa, to talk about what Emancipation Day means to you and uh, and when, uh, when it is, uh, people may not know. Go ahead. Okay, well, first of all, I wanna thank you as well, Mary, and uh, for all the work you've done in our regard and um, letting everyone in Burlington appreciate the diverse co culture environment that we live in, and it's beautiful. Um, emancipation, what it means to me really is the fact that if it wasn't for emancipation, I probably wouldn't be here talking to you right now. Um, and secondly, if it wasn't because of my Black cultural uh, allies and ancestors and likes of that, plus multicultures, again, we would not have been able to get to Canada. 
So emancipation really lays it on the line in regards to freedom for all Blacks throughout all the Commonwealth in 1834 and beyond. Um, it's instrumental in regards to the United States uh, doing the Emancipation Proclamation. Um, and our freedom is similar to everyone's freedom. Um, if you go back in history, as far as slavery is concerned, every society has been involved as slaves within the slavery movement. So when we um, promote and celebrate emancipation, we're just celebrating emancipation for all. And that's who we are, Canadians. Um, we're all for one and one for all. That's the way I like to work anyways. And the education of the emancipation, the Black history is similar to all cultures, history and education. And that's what we should learn. So I'm really appreciative of the fact that we're celebrating on a national basis now. And I appreciate the fact that uh, your city, our city, uh, Burlington is number one or the first city in the world to acclaim August is Emancipation Month. So. Thank you for that as well. You're welcome. Yes, I, I hadn't realized that until you raised it at, at the recent uh, flag raising that we had on August 1st and uh, and the and when we read the proclamation, of course. Uh, turning to you now, uh, Lisa, about Emancipation Day. Again, thank you um, for doing this and for always reaching out and trying to understand. I think it's so important. It's part of what we do as an organization is try to raise awareness and help people to understand that it is our collective history. But I think more importantly, um, especially for people uh, in the community and outside the community, it's just like any other history. It's looking back, it's looking at that history, it's learning from that history. And for me, it was important because I'm in a biracial marriage to make sure that I actively participated for my children as well in celebrating that history. And so when the government made August 1st and the, the weekend and then the month um, such a, a celebration, it's just an invitation to all Canadians to come together, which is really what we're all about. We are not divisive. We are not um, like a country that we can all think of um, and we shouldn't follow that. So I think this is one way of us all coming together and recognizing all the common thing, thing, things rather that we have in common um, while also celebrating those differences and how wonderful all of those are. Yeah, it's very well said uh, from all of you uh, that uh, emancipation is about all of Canada. And, and we do have a history of slavery right here in this country. We, we don't talk about it as much as some of our uh, you know, neighboring countries, but we have it. And, and we have to remember and acknowledge that. And, and that's why it's so important to, you know, let, less than 200 or a little over 200 years ago. Uh, you're right, Dennis, you wouldn't be sitting here. Right, not as a free person, right? Yeah, and exactly. and and so it's really important to acknowledge and and be open and honest about that history, but also, um, you know, how far we've come and the contributions of, of Black African Caribbean uh, people to this rich tapestry that we call uh, Canada, uh, but right here in Burlington too. And and so I want to come to you, um, Lady Abba, about the work that you're doing with the African Caribbean Council. Uh, it's a relatively new organization. Folks may not be familiar with it yet. So, so tell us a little bit about what prompted you to start that uh, and what initiatives uh, you've been involved in and what's, you know, what's coming up for folks who may be watching what they can participate in. Go ahead. Thank you so much. Um, again, it's all about uh, educating ourselves, getting to know a lot more about uh, the diversity we have in our communities. So, um, whether, I mean, I don't know, a lot of people may not know, but uh, the, the slave trade and all the positive and negativity that came out of there was never taught in schools. Even in Africa, at least I can tell you about Nigeria, I'm from Nigeria, right? It was not taught in, in schools. So coming to Canada, uh, it was uh, a lot of, I mean, I learned about it, of course, you know, as I grow, but coming to Canada was a high hope now on how uh, people were treated because it's very new to me as somebody coming from the continent. 
And so uh, I've lived in various parts of the of the country. I mean, in Ontario. So I moved into Milton, and three years in, I realized that there was no mention at all of Black History Month. And um, one of the MPs was new. He was newly elected. I was there to celebrate with him. And, and I'm like, you know what? I've not heard anything about Black History Month. What's happening? And he said, now that you're talking about it, we better get it done. And so that was a Saturday. Uh, the Monday following was um, uh, Emancipation for Coldest Night of the Year. I was at the city hall and I spoke with the mayor and I'm like, can we do this this year? And he said, yeah, he took my hand and he uh, you know, introduced his uh, assistant to me. And lo and behold, within two weeks, we had the first Black History Month in the town of Milton. And so I brought a few people together and said, this can not only be happening in Milton, we need to expand it to other areas, uh, other towns and cities in the Alton region. And that's why the very next year, uh, we did the first one in person, which was uh, February 2020, just before COVID. So in 2021, uh, we were able to have at least Black History Month proclamation and celebration in all the towns and cities in Alton region. And that was the first time I got to uh, meet you. And so the idea is, uh, I know a lot of people will stay on the sidelines and say, you know what, it's somebody else's problem. No, it is not somebody else's problem. It is all our problems. So we believe in African Caribbean Council of all teams to be part of the conversation, to be part of this solution. And so by doing the Black History Month year over year, we've heard of a lot of things from parents, from children, from community members. And uh, we started uh, an initiative that we called Let's Talk Virtual Series. And during the Let's Talk Virtual Series, we bring different people. And we know that our community has not really had a very good relationship with police. We brought in the chief of police. We talked about race, relationship, and trust. And we brought in a lot of people uh, to the Let's Talk Virtual Series. We have it once a, a month. And another thing we did with the Let's Talk Virtual Series is to turn it into an, an educational piece for everyone. For 30 minutes, we talk about culture, culture talk get to know the people in your community. So we know we have 56 countries in Africa. A lot of people don't know that. They feel that Africa is just one country. So it's a matter of education. And we know we have 26 countries in the Caribbean. So we bring people from the Caribbean, people from Africa to come and talk uh, once a month about their country. Again, it's all about education. It's all about, it, I don't believe in assuming. Uh, and so uh, we try to educate through the Let's Talk series, through the culture talk. Now, based on all the interactions we've been having in the community, we're thinking of, okay, how can we continue to empower our children? Because, and I'm saying this with all, uh, how do I put it now? Uh, well, our children are suffering. Oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> our children are suffering the system. They are suffering and we hear a lot of negativity of racism of bullying just because of their skin tone which is only skin deep right because i tell people look at me i got two eyes like you so what makes me all indian right so what can we do as a community to support those children so that they know that in our community we do have professionals i'm a professional banker i've been working in the bank for over three decades now I know people that are lawyers, medical doctors, uh, technology, you know, business uh, entrepreneurs. How can we continue to show our children that they're professionals in the community and they are actually backing them? And not only that, that we also have allies in the community like you, Mayor, you know, backing them, looking for their success, because we know that when we all tribe, everybody will be at peace. Right, And so we came up with a new initiative and we did send you an email to that effect that we call the African, Caribbean and Black Excellence Scholarship Award. It is starting this year, 2022-2023 school year. We're going to be recognizing our children in high school for excellence, for leadership. 
because yes, the school wants them to do 40 hours uh, volunteer because we know volunteering actually brings a different kind of uh, leadership uh, uh, skills to, for them. So we expect them to exceed that 40, uh, 40 hours and also do really well in their education. During one of our Black History Month, one of the directors actually said that when our kids are not too, doing too good, everybody hears about it. But when they're excellent, nobody hears about it. So we wanna showcase our children's excellence. And this is across Halton region. Every school, every high school in Halton region will have a winner. So that is something yes. that's in, in September. So how can you support? We really, really want you to support. And this is news, this is fresh. Uh, I mean, we, we've only, you know, reached out to leaders in the organization, but I mean, in, in Alton region, polit politicians in Alton region. Uh, and I'm happy that I have this platform to actually say this. We will be having a press release. So I'm just throwing this out there. Uh, this is out from the press. Uh, we'll be having a press release September 8th at the, guess what? The regional headquarters of the police. This is how people are supporting the community. Imagine people saying, oh no, we don't have a good relationship with the police, but now the police is supporting us, right? They're open to supporting us. So that's something coming out of our stables. And I'm so happy and excited for our children because I know we're gonna have a professionals like Dennis, like Lisa, like you, Mayor, to join us to say, I'm here for you, I'm an ally. You know, I'm supporting you so that we can have a better, inclusive Alton region. Thank you. Nice. Well, that that's fantastic, and we'll make sure that we have some links to that uh, once, certainly once it's out. But we can talk about how people on the show even uh, perhaps provide contact information for how people can reach you as well as uh, uh, Lisa and, and Dennis, uh, the Halton Black History Awareness Society, because there's lots of good stuff happening there too. Uh, but I, you know, it was, it was amazing to me to hear you say, uh, Lady Abba, that you didn't learn about slavery in your own country. I mean, uh, it, it is so important that we understand, uh, you know, our all of our collective roots and how. Um, uh, you know, how it has impacted us for better and for worse, right? We, we still have legacy of that. And I absolutely echo what you say about the, the racism that continues uh, in our city, even to this day. I, I have people reaching out uh, more often than I would like uh, to, to talk to me about their experiences here in Burlington, because we are still predominantly uh, white. Uh, we have about 11% of our population is visible minority. Um, but that's still very a very dominant uh, uh, culture that people would you know say there is uh, well they shouldn't see people as different they should see them as part of our tapestry and, and what makes us uh, unique uh, and I know you've been doing a lot of work in uh, in that space both education and celebration and and awareness raising so I want to start this time with you uh, first Lisa to talk about the work of the Halton um, Black History Awareness Society. You recently had a festival, which is awesome. Uh, and But you you do so much more uh, than that. And, and uh, I'll give you a chance as well, Dennis, to talk about that. Go ahead. Yes, yeah, so um, earlier um, in 2021, when we were all in lockdown and we were um, getting together as a, as a board, I think we had a, a, a real shift, a real change. And the shift that that was brought about was brought about by 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 our chair. And uh, it was, you know, we need to stop just being agitators and catching people doing things wrong because um, we're not making the progress that we could be making if we were committed to working together collaboratively and taking action. And so um, that meant that in everything that we're doing, we're trying to engage the community. We're trying to um, go beyond the, the complaint or the, the situation and to understand it and to help. But I think that we've also in, the space of inclusion, you, you hit plateaus. And so I can see the plateaus. And so the plateaus now become leaders are saying, well, we have an anti-racist statement. We have values that are up for inclusion and, and so on. And what we're doing is we're challenging them 
in, in a positive way to say, okay, but what's the next step? Because you cannot behind hide behind rather equity roundtables and inclusion roundtables and have values. Because if I walk in that building, if it's a hospital, if it's the city hall, if it's wherever it is, and that's what you're claiming, but I don't experience it, then it becomes performative. It becomes something that is not believed. And so I think we have a much greater job um, to, to do to help people to get to that next step and to really hold the mirror up and say, what am I doing that is action oriented um, with respect to promoting inclusion and promoting diversity and equity versus what am I doing to just call out people when I think they're not being inclusive. And, and that's still a, a, an important thing for us to do, but we have to go beyond blaming to fixing. I, very well said, and I'll come to you, Dennis. Uh, I just want to pick up a little bit up, uh, on that, that we're in a, I, I can tell you, we're in a very different stage of the city's evolution to uh, to be more diverse and to be more welcoming of diversity. And I'm having conversations with people in the community who are wanting to learn more about our Black history, our Indigenous history, uh, and others and wanting to understand, wanting to be involved, people saying, and this picks up on what Lady Abba said earlier, I had no idea. I had no idea this was our Canadian history. This was our Ontario or Burlington history. And, and there's a real hunger to learn. And I've not seen it in my 12 years in office as strong as it is now. So there's a real opportunity, I think, to, to have these conversations while we're also having to acknowledge that racism still does exist. And, and you're right. It, it you know, it, we have to acknowledge that we have to be transparent and and accountable uh, to each other for that and say that this is not acceptable but we can't leave it there uh, because then people just feel helpless and hopeless and and so I, I just love that you are you are really about uh, moving forward both uh, both of you and your organizations around taking concrete positive actions uh, toward education and celebration and and awareness uh, raising which is so critically important all of it uh, matters uh, and you're and you're doing all of it. So um, uh, without further ado, over to you, Dennis. I'm sure you want to jump in here too. Go ahead. <laughs> well, I'm really proud to point out that actually um, the Burlington uh, Caribbean Connection uh, brought me in to teach their children Black Canadian history. Um, I'm a seventh generation Black Canadian, and I didn't know that I wasn't taught my Black history until I was 21 years old. When I took, took over another festival in the Owen Sound, which is the most northerly retreat of the Underground Railroad, um, resurrected it and opened people's eyes in regards to as multicultures that brought us here, opened people's eyes in regards to the fact um, all uh, communities have undergone slavery at one point or another, and really saw in youth eyes the amazement they felt and had when they learned about their Canadian Black history. So we are continuously educating anyone and everyone, especially in the educational system in regards to our country, Black contributors, our Canadian Black history, um, some of the uh, things that we have to go through and how we can overcome them, um, and pride in regards to who we are, both as a culture, as a part of a large Organ, uh, nation and as individuals. And we see this growth happening in regards to promoting their best interests towards education and career and internally in regards to within the education system as well as in the family situation. So I'm very happy that um, individuals are coming to the fore to learn more. We just had an essay contest for all of Halton, uh, secondary schools, um, and multicultures, multicolors participate in it. And I'm really proud of that. And we had four winners because we had two top winners, which were equalized on a scale basis. And we're very pleased in regards to Metroland supporting us in regards to um, promoting these essays but your education or everyone in the Halton area. And we are looking forward in regards to continuing this, possibly with other cultures down the road. So everybody can learn about who everybody else is. And I wanna make one other point. It's very essential here because Halton 
now and in the past have been the fastest growing visible minority region in all of Canada. So it's very important that we stay as number one as we are in the city and continue on with this aspect of getting cultural education into the education system. So we welcome your help in that regard. Well, you've got, <laughs> you've got it and, and you knew that and that, you know, that's why it's so important to have you here. And I'm so grateful that that you've all joined today to talk about your organizations. That's one step forward and talk about the initiatives that you've got up coming up. Uh, so we're we're almost out of time here. Uh, I do. Uh, you know, I was just thinking as as you were speaking, uh, Dennis, uh, recently you had a gala event and Lawrence Hill, the author, of course, spoke. And one of the things that that really stood out to me that night when he said, you know, we know who Rosa Parks is and we know who Martin Luther King is and we might know who Viola Davis is, uh, who is obviously our, our Canadian on, on a, one of our um, monetary notes. But then he listed all these other names of people I had never heard of. I'd like just embarrassed to say that I didn't know these other um, people, men and women uh, that contributed so much to advancing the uh, the well-being and, and emancipation in some cases of, uh, of Black Canadians. And so um, I've, I've made notes of several books that I need to follow up with <laughs> and read. Uh, I, I love the essay contest. I think it's terrific, uh, Lady Abba, that you are working with the Halton Regional Police because you're right, uh, the, the relationship historically, uh, globally between uh, Black communities and the police has been uh, has, has not been great. Uh, that's an understatement. But but right here in Halton, there's a lot of effort made to build bridges uh, to our communities. And I know, Lisa, uh, that you, uh, the, you've been a key part of that as well. Uh, but it's important to move beyond uh, those roundtables, uh, as you said, uh, to actual action. So uh, we just have a couple of seconds left. I'm going to wrap up here um, and, and give you a chance to say uh, goodbye to our viewers. But thank you so much, uh, Lady Ava, for uh, for joining us, the African Caribbean Council of Halton, and Lisa and Dennis Scott from the Halton Black History Awareness Society, and for all the work that you do. And we'll make sure that we promote those initiatives coming up. Uh, I hope you have a terrific rest of your day. And again, thank you for being uh, with us here today on the show on Burlington Matters. I am signing out uh, as your mayor, Marianne Mead Ward. Uh, tune in after the election, uh, where we'll be back with more amazing uh, panelists and great topics to discuss. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for having Pleasure. us.